One of the byproducts of an artist's work is the historical nature. And so we can look back to see what was going on, what it really looked like, and it was at that spot, that point in time. And one of the things that this is a curry and ive print. Curry and ive was artwork for the masses, really. And then what they would do is they would hire an artist. And that artist would do a, a painting of perhaps what Curry and I wanted the scene to be of. And then they would make prints of it, and it, very inexpensive prints. And so this one, and it's many times, and they will show, it just says, Staten Island and the Narrows. You know where the Verrazano Narrow Bridge is? Well, this shows the, the fort, and it even has a, you know, identification of Fort Lafayette, and it shows the view from Staten Island probably over to uh, Manhattan, and the whole view is really out there for you to see what it looked like when in 1835, 1840, when it was painted, and over here, this is Fort Hamilton, probably named after, you know, the treasure the great treasurer and Hamilton. And this was uh, Fort Richmond over here. And so, and this was published by Curry and Ives. And so it is, it's a great image with the original watercolor paint. And so if you couldn't afford to have the real landscape painted, oil on canvas, you can have an inexpensive Curry and I print, just like today. You can go to the Athenaeum or any museum and buy a print of a great Milton Avery that's in the museum. Yeah. Who can afford to take home a Milton Avery that's filmed for, you know, three or four or five million dollars today, but you can buy a print in the, in the bookshop, you know, for $35. So that's basically what this was. And these prints were done with stone, stone plates, and really stone, and they inked it, and it was a whole process. Yes, after the print was done, then they were painted by hand yeah, in, in, the, in the shop. But, but these were done by hand, and if you come up and you look, it's, it's not fine work because they were probably trying to push these out quickly, inexpensively, but you get the idea of what um, Staten Island and the Narrows looked like at that time. And then Curry and I became so popular that other companies sprung up, and there was one in Hartford, uh, Kellogg. And uh, so they, they became popular. They were starting to make, make a lot of money. And so other companies started to imitate what they were doing. And this was, this was very, very popular. It was in everybody's homes. The finest homes had Curry and I prints. And because uh, not everybody could afford paintings or even know the artist to even have that opportunity. <coughs> in lithography, you have a limestone block, a tablet. Usually they're three inches or so, four inches deep and however big you can, you can get them. And then you would draw onto the stone with a wax pencil. And you would draw and you can draw every gradient like you could with a regular pencil from light to dark and create the whole image. And then the, then the wax pencil is treated with chemicals. And the, wherever the wax was becomes, let's see if I get this right, it was a few years ago, becomes water resistant, or actually water adherent. Let's go with that one. Becomes water adherent, because then you take your ink, your water-based ink, and you roll it out onto the tablet. And wherever the pencil was, the ink sticks. And so that's, the ink is then transferred onto the stone. And when you, then you put it on the, a bed of a printing press, you wet your paper, put the paper over the stone, run it through the press, and when you peel off the paper, the ink transfers from the stone to the paper. And then you let it dry and you have a lithographic.